Okay, so today we're going to do a diaphragm repair kit on a D50. It actually has two side diaphragms and your air accumulator diaphragm on top. Uh, tools needed. You're going to need a three quarter inch socket with an impact. You're going to need a ratchet. And you're going to need pretty much a little pin or some sort of a pick. And I'll explain to you why you're going to need that. I've taken off the regulator off of this just so it's going to be a lot easier for you to maneuver once you get it to where you want to go ahead and start draining the oil. Basically in your parts, when you go to get one of your parts and you're going to get them, basically you're going to come with replacement O-rings. There's going to be four of them and they're all the same size. You're going to come with the air accumulator diaphragm which is going to go on your top and then you're going to have your two replacements. Now on these, they're actually labeled. So you have an oil symbol that's grooved into it. And then you have on the other side, it's gonna say water or liquid on this one actually. So yeah, so that's basically the way, and I'm gonna show you how that's gonna be put in so you don't put them in backwards. So we don't mistake anything. So to start, what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna take this top chamber off, loosen in these two side bolts, this is just basically going to slide off. Okay. So on the bottom of it you have two valves and on your heads you have two valves. So one's in, one's out. So the way you took it off is basically the way you're going to put it back on. So if you have a valve that's on this side and there's a valve on this side, you actually have been installing it backwards. So we want to make sure we took it off and put it on the same way. So I'm just going to set that to the side. We'll go ahead and pop these O-rings out. We'll replace them. Put it in the drip, drop pan. And I'll go ahead and take one side of the head off to get to the first diaphragm. Sometimes it'll stick inside there if it's been in there for so long. So you're going to take your pick and you're just going to want to grab that diaphragm, kind of break the seal off of it. Okay, so the trick of taking this diaphragm off, if you notice, it's just going to spin. There's a lock nut on here, so that's standard. Basically, where the pin is inside, you kind of have to pull your diaphragm up and out. To, and you, it's kind of hard to see, but there's a locking mechanism in there that's going to allow you to lock that in. So what I want to do is I kind of want to shift the gear and turn that. So once it raises up, so now I have a little play in there. So if you can see, right in here, there's a little hole that's holding it in place. So what I want to do is I want to lock that in. So now I can go ahead and take that nut and washer off that diaphragm. Okay, so you have your lock nut, you have your diaphragm washer. That has a bevel side. So you want to make sure that the bevel side's always going to go back down laying flat on your diaphragm when you go to replace that diaphragm. So then what we want to do here is we're just going to pull that old diaphragm off. So if I take this flat washer off, I'm going to show you where the pin lock is on that. So you know without that being locked in, you're not going to get that nut off regardless. Okay, so now that I've got the old diaphragm off, I'm going to go ahead and just inspect everything, make sure everything's okay. What I want to do is I want to clean this pump a little bit with some brake cleaner. Kind of get the old residue out of this pump. So now you're going to want to take your piston sleeve 
out. Like so. So if you notice, you have a horseshoe kind of mouth, fish mouth on that. That's made designed to where when you go to install that, that mouth is actually going to go side to side. So you want to make sure that that's going to actually go down over that piston once you go to put it back in there. So I'll show you how to do that once I drain this oil. We're going to go on and go ahead and just take all your oil out. I'm going to go to the other side. We're going to take this head off. side we want to find the pin lock so I'm going to need to again get that piston to push out like we did the other side and with doing so you can just move the shaft on the pump and kind of rotate it into the direction that you want it you can go either way this pump's universal which I've located it now what I want to do is insert Okay, so now I'm locked in. So I'm going to want to take this now. There's my old diaphragm, so we just want to put that to the side, pull this off. Okay, so now I want to get this other sleeve out. Sometimes it's kind of tough to get out with your fingers, so you can use actually a screwdriver to come through the other side, and you're just going to want to tap it, and it'll just pop right out there. So now that I got everything out, I just want to inspect everything, make sure everything is okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and clean this up with some brake cleaner. Just to get the residue out of there. I'm just gonna dry it off, clean it up. Okay. So now what I'm gonna do is I wanna start away from the sight glass so I'm gonna go ahead and lay this flat and I'm gonna install my piston sleeve again. So we're gonna go back. Reason being that this fish mouth goes down the way it is if you look it's gonna slide right over the piston and it's gonna feed on top and bottom. So if you put it sideways the other way to where your fish mouth is actually going in like that, it's going to hit these sides and it's not going to go in. So it's going to be something that you'll you'll see when you're putting your sleeve back in. So I'm going to go ahead and reinstall my piston sleeve. Second back washer, it's flat on one side, bevel on the other. You want the bevel side up. So then now we want to lock back in our pin through that pin hole. And I'm going to install my new diaphragm. So you have your liquid side and you have your oil side. So your oil side is going to go down. So we're just going to pull that little stem up and slide it over that. Okay. Now 
going to install the diaphragm nut and washer, bevel side down. So if you come to a point where it's actually sitting up, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to go back. You're going to want to use a pick or something. You can turn the shaft again to lay it back flat. So we're going to move. You notice every time I turn it, that diaphragm lays flat down. Now once it's sealed into place, then we can go ahead and we'll put our head back on it. side in, I'm going to start on the other side. Let's go ahead and put the sleeve in. So let's move our oil side down. Bevel down the washer. Put my nut back on. This back up. Okay. Now I'm going to tighten my nut back down. Okay. Right, that's all tight. I'm going to go ahead and put our Okay, so now I got my diaphragms in place. Everything's ready. I just want to go ahead and fill up my sight glass. There's actually a gauge here that'll tell you minimum, maximum. We don't want to go max, so we want to kind of just get that oil right in between them two marks. So I'm gonna go ahead and fill my pump up, and it'll bowl, it'll start to bubble on you a little bit. No big deal. It's just taking in all the oil. Eventually the air bubbles will slow down. That's telling me that pump's almost full of the oil that's required. So now you don't see any air bubbles. So now that's telling me that I'm full where I need to be. There's an O-ring on the bottom of the cap. Just make sure that's back in place. If not, that'll leak. We're gonna go ahead and replace our cap, tighten that down. Now I'm gonna go back to putting on your top manifold. I've already replaced the O-rings on the top on each side. So these O-rings on this side, sometimes they typically they want to move on. So the trick of it is, is go ahead and just grab, grab the O-rings with your two fingers. So that's going to keep me pretty much intact when I go to slide this head back on. And then we're just going to want to slide that on until it pinches my fingers. And then I know I'm pretty close to getting it down. And then I'm just going to lock it down. It's 
back on the top of that. Just tighten that down. Last, we are going to replace the air accumulator diaphragm that's located on the top. It's going to basically look like that. Sometimes they'll tear, they'll bend, they'll rupture. So what we're going to do is using a half inch socket, we're going to go ahead and take these bolts off. And it just pops right out. Then you have your accumulator diaphragm. It's basically sitting down in there, so it's a half moon. So we're going to go ahead and replace that with a new one. You just want to set it flush. And pop. To evenly tighten these down, you're going to want to kind of jump triangle basically like you're tightening the tire up. It doesn't matter which way you go. And I'm going to go all the way around just to give it an extra try down. Here you have basically your air chamber where you're going to put air into this and it's going to basically be 20% of running pressure. So if you're running at 200 pounds, you're going to want to put 40 pounds into this with air. So if for some reason you put your regulator back on and you go to run it and you're seeing that your gauge is bouncing back and forth like it's kind of not staying steady pressure. What you're going to want to do is either check the air pressure while it's running, either let a little air out or you may not have enough air in it. So that, that's not a big problem. You can just add air or take air out. Once you get your air in it, you put your cap back on it. And that is the diaphragm repair kit on a D50.